Hello students, once again a very warm welcome to biology classes. So in today's class, I am going to talk about a topic which is DNA fingerprinting. So please have a look. DNA fingerprinting. Each and every organism who exists on this earth surface and they have or especially in case of the human they have a specific pattern of these fingerprints. Can you see that that we are different from others? Now the reason is we have different types of fingerprinting. Similarly in case of DNA also differences are there. If we talk about the overall DNA 99% DNA of one individual matches with another individual, right? Then what is the difference? Difference is just 0.01% difference is there, right? And this 0.01 difference that means we are talking about 3 into 10 raised to power 6 base pair which itself is a very good number. Now DNA fingerprinting is that method in which one organism is detected that uh, suppose we have to solve a case a criminal case is there and we have suspects and also we have certain DNA certain you can say the genetic material we have obtained from a crime scene. So from the suspect from the number of suspects uh, by matching the DNA a specific sequence we actually match by matching them we get to know that this one is a criminal not only in the case of these crime scene also for the parenting for the disputes for the parenting uh, disputes uh, these DNA fingerprinting is being done now what is the basis of this DNA fingerprinting the basis is repetitive DNA sequence there are certain sequence which are repeated n number of time now these repeated sequences they are see this whole technique the DNA fingerprinting this was developed by the Alec Zephyr and this whole technique of DNA fingerprinting that actually gives us an idea that this particular uh, like this particular organism is a criminal or it is not a criminal now repeated DNA sequence we actually check there are two type of these repetitive DNA sequences right see one type is termed as a mini satellites one is termed as a mini satellite and second is termed as a micro satellite I know this uh, one question might be there in your mind that ma'am when we talk about the DNA, DNA certain part of our DNA some genes are there which expresses itself. So these repeated sequences they actually do not express themselves but we actually look for this polymorphism in this repetitive DNA sequences. Now how to get to know that this is what our repetitive sequences is, how to get to know this is our bulk DNA is. For that we use one method which is termed as a, a cesium chloride or the density gradient centrifugation. We go for one procedure which is a density gradient centrifugation. Now this cesium chloride density gradient uh, centrifugation this actually differentiate the DNA or that actually gives a two peak now listen it gives two peak now major peak the bigger peak is of a bulk DNA is of a bulk DNA and rest all are the repetitive sequence. Now these repeated sequence they are of two type which are the mini satellites and second is a micro satellite is it clear to you so we have two peaks like this so this is what a bulk DNA is this is what our repeated sequences is is it clear to you now this mini satellites they are also termed as VNTR 
this is termed as VNTR. Now, what is a VNTR? That is a variable number tandem repeats. Now, these actually varies from 0.1, this is 0.1 to 20 kilo base pair. Right. Whereas the micro satellites, micro satellite are also termed as SSR, right? Which is a short sequence repeats, and it varies from first one to six base pair. One to six base pair. So DNA fingerprinting actually gives us an idea regarding the uh, repetitive DNA sequence. Now, these repetitive DNA sequence they are divided into two two different part on three bases. So we looked at the three different bases on which we have divided these repeated DNA sequences into two. Now what are these? The first is a copy number. That means one sequence. Suppose let us take an example of a ATGC sequence. How many times this ATGC sequence is repeated? That is termed as its copy number. Second, the length of segment, length of segment. Third basis is number of purine and pyrimidine. So this is how we have classified these repeated sequences into two types, mini satellite and micro satellites. So what we go for, we look for polymorphism in them, polymorphism, right? Now let us take one example, this actually these repeated sequences, they remain conserved in a generation. So father will be giving a same type of repeated or they will be the daughter or the son, they will be having same kind of repeated sequences uh, just like that of a father and the mother, right? Is it clear to you? Now the process of DNA fingerprinting, it involves various steps. Let us talk about these steps, students come at the side. Now, now I am dealing with the steps. Now the first method is uh, or first step sorry is the isolation of DNA. Now what we have to do, we have to isolate DNA. This isolation of DNA we have already studied in biotechnology. Second, the second step is use of restriction and o nucleases. Now what are restriction endonucleases? These are the molecular caesar which uses a particular sequence and produces a double strand cut. These are also termed as a molecular caesar. So what we used to do after the isolation of DNA, we uh, uses the enzyme which is a restriction endonucleases. Now the third step is the separation. So once all these, suppose the whole DNA sequence I have, I have cut into the various fragments. Now the next step is the separation of DNA sequences or you can say that will be more convenient segments, right? So once we have isolated, once we have separated, see how we can separate this DNA frag segments, how we can do that? With the help of electrophoresis, the gel electrophoresis, so depending upon the size they will be distributed. Now what is the next step? I will place or I will produce an imprint of it on a nitrocellulose paper. Paper transfer. Now I will transfer this on a nitrocellulose paper. Now what is the next step? What will I do now? I will use radio labeled VNTR. probe used, right? Now these radio labeled probe, wheresoever these repeated sequences are there, they will go and they will bind to it. Now how will I get to know that binding has occurred or not? 
Then the next step is the auto radiography. Auto radiography. So after the uh, UV illumination, what we uh, you get is all those segments which are having those sequences, they will be easily detected by auto radiography. So these are the certain six steps by which the this DNA fingerprinting is done, right? Is it clear to you? Now let's talk about an uh, example. Let's take one example and let's understand this phenomena. Now let's understand this. Suppose. Uh, let's take an example. Suppose I'm talking about a person A. Person A. So I'm taking one chromosome. Let's talk about a chromosome number seven. Chromosome number seven, right? So in case of chromosome number seven, yes, I'll be taking the homologous pair and I'll be looking for these repeated DNA sequences in them. Suppose in the first chromosome, the repeated DNA sequence, suppose they are 8 and in second, suppose there are 3, right? Similarly, let's talk about another chromosome, chromosome number 2, number 2. So again, I'll be taking both the homologous chromosome. Similarly, right? Suppose uh, the repeated DNA sequences in this case, I'm just taking one example in this case is 4 and 5, right? Randomly I'm taking. Now let's talk about another chromosome. Let's take chromosome number 21. So this chromosome is related to which syndrome? Down syndrome. So trisomy is seen in the patient who is suffering from the Down syndrome. So that is a, a different topic. Suppose these are the chromosome number 21 and I'll check the repeated sequences in them. And I'll get to know in this case there is only one and in this case also there is the three repeated sequences are present. So this is how the repeated sequences they are present. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is it clear to you? Now one, two and three. Now in this case, 1, 2, 3 and 4, 1, 2, uh, sorry, 1, 2, 3 and 4 and 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yes, in this case there is a one repeated sequence present, in this case uh, there is presence of 3, these 3 times means to say they are repeated. Now let's talk about the another person, person B, right? So the same chromosome I will be taking for another person also. Same chromosome, chromosome number 7, 2 and 21 I will be taking. Now suppose in this case there are 10, in this case there are uh, suppose the 7, in this case suppose there are 2, there are uh, you can take the 6 are there, in this case no repeated sequence was there, uh, Just uh, I am just taking one random example and uh, the again the 7 is there, right. So. After this separation, the different bands, they will be formed. And suppose I have to identify the band from the DNA which I have or the, like uh, the blood sample which I have got from the crime scene. Now, listen to this. Right. So, maximum re repeated sequences, they are 10. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So this is how a ladder is. I have placed a ladder. Two and one. Now let's talk about the first person. First person band I am I'm drawing here. So first is a eight. So first the eight one. 
second is a uh, second uh, after this eight what will be present next the five so this is how five then four then three and one then four then three and one so eight three yes the three is repeated two times now let's talk about our second individual now the second individuals is having the 10 these repeat 10 times repeated sequences then uh, the 7 then uh, the 2 then again uh, the 6 so the 7 1 again right suppose from the crime scene uh, x individual suppose there is an x individual whose uh, dna we have isolated from the crime scene where uh, the like his hairs they were present so we have isolated the dna we have amplified it and then we'll go for the same procedure that is a dna fingerprinting and suppose the bands which is produced in this case they are like this suppose so that gives us that clearly gives us an idea that this second suspect is a criminal right is it clear to you so this is how we can uh, like we can detect any individual whether the person has undergone the particular crime or not now let's uh, tell is an example so this is how bands they are produced and we have to match these repeated sequences now from the crime scene uh, these type of bands they are obtained and two suspects were there and depending upon the matches matching see these are matched similarly these are also matched this is matching so this crime scene dna is completely matching with the dna of the or suspect two right so students this is all about the today's session where we have discussed regarding the dna fingerprinting so more detail of this what you can do is you can refer to our sessions uh, you can go to our website mesostudy.com and in detail you can study this. So take care of yourself. Thank you so much students for watching this.